it really matters and it like really doesn't matter what matters is you know the people who are sparked by it and the people who are like offended by it it doesn't fucking matter fuck you you know like because it's about motivating the doers and anyone that wants to sit around and talk shit they're doing too much time they're taking too much time talking shit about it thoughts their perception of themselves they're slowed down by their perception of themselves. If you're taught you can't do anything, you won't do anything. I was taught I could do everything. <laughs> and I'm Kanye West at age 36. <laughs> so just watch the next 10 years. One thing I want to express to people also, people think a lot of my motivation is very like megalomaniac and self-oriented. To the contrary, completely. I just want to help. From day one, I just wanted to help. It's crazy that we live in a world that if you're super positive and super creative, that it's scary. So what does that tell you about the mentality of most people? If you're scared of like positivity and creativity, like there's, I have no intent to do anything negative to, any, to anyone. I will only want, you know, more positive things to happen. The codes of that, Go listen to all my music. It's the codes of self-esteem. It's the codes of who you are. If you're a Kanye West fan, you're not a fan of me. You're a fan of yourself. You will believe in yourself. I'm just the espresso. I'm just the shot in the morning to get you going. They say people don't stand up and protect their dreams. People are too scared of getting, you know, spoofed in a way. And the irony of it is so many people that are creatives, think about a creative person in school. When you picture them, you probably picture them all the way in the back of the class sketching or maybe getting beat up and I'm the one creative and this is the reason why I went on stage this is the reason why I did this because creatives have got beat up my entire life and there's moments where I stood up to drug dealers in Chicago and said you can't have my publishing come and kill me do whatever you're going to do but you're not going to bully me you're not going to stop me because my mother made me believe in myself no matter how many people tell me stop believing in yourself Stop saying what you can do. Stop affirming what you're gonna do and then and then completing that in real life. That's the improper way to do it. I refuse to follow those rules that society has set up in the way that they control people with low self-esteem, with improper information, with branding, with marketing. I refuse to follow those rules. It's about truth, it's about information, it's about awesomeness, and the only luxury is time. The time you spend with your family. That's the only luxury to this I'm not in a competition with anyone. None of us will be remembered. You know, our existence as a race, humanity, period, is a blip, a millisecond of our life in the entire scope of the universe. All these walls that keep us from loving each other as like one family, as one race, you know, racism religion, you know, where we grew up, you know, whatever, it is, uh, class, social, and economics, you know, all this. What makes us, like, be so selfish, prideful? What makes us not want to help the, the next man? What makes us, you know, be so focused on a personal legacy as opposed to an entire legacy of a race? You know, like, the dinosaurs aren't remembered for much more than their bones. You know, so for when humanity's gone, you know, what do we give to even this little planet, you know, that we're on? And what could we do collectively? Like, removing the pride. It is the glass shattering of the class system, which is the new racism. Class is the new way to discriminate against people, to hold people down, to hold people in their place based on where their kids go to school, how much money they make, what they drive, where they live, and what type of clothes they have, and how much, you know, how much they have in their account for, you know, retirement. To somehow say that this person right here means more than this person. Like, I know we, you know, I know I tweeted, you know, Black Lives Matter, but, you know, all lives matter. Like, my doorman is more important to me than any head of any company. He keeps us safe. My driver keeps us safe and goes to work every day. The guy painting the windows, you know, at the house. 
you know, when we changed them from white to chocolate brown or, you know, what the architect suggested. He is just as important as anyone else that walks in a house and grabs a glass of champagne. It's no more of this separation of where you came from, your race, financial, finance background, education, talent level, beauty, all, what, whatever it is that people use. Inclusion is the future, period. The mixing of ideas, the mixing of the, you know, the two lunch tables working together, you know, humanity, period, man. We're, we're one, we're one, we're one people. Exclusivity is the new N-word. Not nigga. Exclusivity. Am I saying the word right? Yeah. Yeah. That is the new N-word. Because nothing should be exclusive. Everyone should have an opportunity to drink from the same fountain. Mm -hmm. The idea of exclusivity is a new colored people fountain concept. And saying, we're gonna overcharge sneaker culture guys to, you know, drink at the right fountain. You know, we have to reboot our mentality, period, of a generation. You know, it wouldn't even matter if I sold one sweatshirt, you know, as long as this interview gets done and kids hear this and know this and someone in a position of power or someone that will be in a position of power in the future has a chance to make a difference and that they saw that someone who was at their lowest point grabbing at straws expressed themselves freely and overcame it through all adversity. All adversity means that they can do the same thing. Misunderstood, and you know, like I said, I, I didn't, I didn't come here to be liked. I came here to make a difference. You know, not particularly just this interview. I'm talking about life. Life. You know, some people's job. They're very extremely likable, and you know, I think I could figure that out. I think I'm way nicer to people just in general. Mm -hmm. Everyone that I meet, I'm extremely nice. But as soon as people start playing games, I stop. I stop playing games. And at any moment, I can hit that yay button. Mm -hmm. And we can go right back to day one. <laughs> but people be forgetting, though. You know what I'm saying? They be forgetting real quick. You know, so. Uh, <laughs> but it's all, it's all love and great energy and positive energy. I, I, I got scared of the idea. You know, someone called you crazy so many times you start to believe it. And I, and I almost got scared of the idea of like going crazy in some way, but I wasn't going crazy. I was like the only person that wasn't crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the, I, I stand there and I just look like, is, is anyone else here seeing what I'm seeing? None of you guys are seeing what I'm seeing or it's just like your Maybach in your house is like that important that you won't move at all.